for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Roger Stern, Dollar. Oh, hello, Mr. Stern. Got a job for you. Fine. Our company insures a Mr. Barney Rico. Oh, I know that name. Used to be pretty big in the rackets, wasn't he? Yeah, for the past seven years, he's been Mr. Eight Number One Citizen. Our company insured his life for 100000 He was killed yesterday. How? Oh. He was murdered. See Lieutenant Briggs at the 7th Precinct. He'll give you the details. Right. Briggs is an old friend. When can you leave? As soon as I pack a bag. <laughs> if I break in a few seconds to discuss games with you, how many of you, when you were youngsters, ever tried to escape from the world of reality by playing cowboys and Indians or cops and robbers? Today's youngsters have added two more professions to the world of make-believe, spacemen and G-men. And speaking of G-men, do you know where that name came from? Actually, it was used about 20 years ago by gangsters to describe members of our Federal Bureau of Investigation as part of the Department of Justice and acts as a kind of detective agency whose duty it is to track down those who break our federal laws. The FBI also does counterintelligence work in ferreting out spies and saboteurs. And here's an amazing fact about our FBI men. Despite the extreme dangers of their work, it wasn't until some 20 years ago that they were given the authority to carry guns. With no other weapon than courage, resourcefulness, and determination, they had to track down and apprehend dangerous racketeers and spies. Today, however, you will find that the typical FBI agent may be a lawyer, accountant, or specialist in some other profession but thoroughly trained in scientific police methods and handy with any type of weapon. Expense accounts submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Intercontinental Bonding and Indemnity, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Gino Gambona matter. Expense account item one, $24.98, train fare and incidentals between Hartford and New York City. I arrived at Grand Central, went directly to the hotel where I registered and called Lieutenant Arthur Briggs. I caught him on his way to lunch. He agreed to meet me in a small restaurant across from the precinct. Well, good to see you again, Johnny. Well, good to see you, Art. It's been a long time. Investigating the Rico killing, huh? Yeah. Why don't we order, and then you can tell me about it. Well, I know what I want. This is corned beef day. Good corned beef, real lean. Oh, that sounds Nancy? fine. I'll be right there, Art. How much is Rico insured for? 100000 The brother's the beneficiary. Uh-huh. Any idea who killed him? No, not yet. It's always tough when a guy's been in the racket, even if he's gone straight for a while. He used to be with a Gambona outfit, wasn't he? Yeah, you know how that might... Well, hello, beautiful. Corned beef? Yeah, two. Coffee? Yeah, Johnny? Yeah, coffee. Two beef, two coffee, salad or soup? Just the corned beef for me. Yeah, I don't want salad or the soup, but sure. Are you putting on weight? You kidding? No, you're getting a little... I'm on a diet. You kidding? Well, just ask. I don't mind. Gee, that's going to make all the difference in the world. I still love it. All a big fat me? Gee. <laughs> you cute. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, getting back to Rico. I was saying, I'm sure you know it. Any time a guy like Rico gets killed, it's tough to come up with the answer. Could be any one of a dozen guys he was in the rackets with. You remember him at all? Yeah, he was the one who testified against Gambona. That's right. His testimony sent Gambona back to Sicily. Could have been any one of Gambona's mob that's just been waiting for the chance. I don't know whether you remember or not, but at the trial, Gambona made it plenty clear that he'd get Rico sooner or later. What's happened to Gambona? He's still in Sicily. Rico did pretty well for himself after he went straight. Yeah, he did fine. Opened a string of barber shops, built himself a nice home. My brother's name is uh, Dave. Yeah, he manages the shop. What did he have to say? Well, uh, he's scared stiff. He didn't have anything to do with sending Gambona to Sicily, but he was in the outfit and pulled out from his brother dead. He's in a panic. He hasn't got any idea who killed Barney? Well, if he does, he isn't saying, and I can't say I blame him. Well, after lunch, I think I'll have a talk with Dave. 
Yeah. He's probably at the main shop or at home. There you are. Whoa, thanks. Beautiful. Lean enough for you? Looks great. Well, I'm glad something around here has got too much fat on it. Expense account item two, $3.55, lunch for Lieutenant Briggs and myself, after which Briggs gave me Dave Rico's home and business address, and I left. Expense account item three, $1.45, cab fare to Dave Rico's home, where I talked with his wife. She informed me that her husband hadn't returned from work yet and suggested I go to the main barber shop of the Rico chain. Expense account item four, $1.65, more cab fare from the Rico house to the barber shop. On East 118th Street. It was after six when I arrived, and the shop was closed. The interior was dark, except for a light coming from a back room. I knocked on the door and waited. I was about to leave when I saw the figure of a man stagger into the darkened shop from the lighted back room. He stood for a moment, framed in the doorway, one hand clutching his stomach. I banged on the door again and watched as the man pushed himself away from the door jam and started across the shop. Halfway to the front door, he slumped to the floor and lay still. I stepped back, kicked the glass out near the door lock, reached in and opened the door. But by the time I got to the man's side, he was dying in a hurry. Uh, Come on, doctor, please. Yeah, yeah, sure. Who did it? No. Come, boy. He died looking up at the ceiling and holding his stomach where a knife had cut him almost in two. It was Dave Rico, and he named Gambona as his killer. I called Lieutenant Briggs. Gambona? That's what he said. I asked him who did it, and he said Gambona. Well, that's crazy. Why? He know Gambona's in Sicily. You sure? Well, sure, I'm sure. Authorities over there keep a close check. Maybe he met Gambona's mob. A lot of them still around. Well, wouldn't he know them? But he said Gambona. Well, I'll get a cable off to the authorities in this one. In the meantime, what if Gambona is in town? If he is, he's going to have a hard time getting back out. But a lot of people would hide him. I'll, uh, I'll start checking right away. See you, Johnny. The coroner's deputy arrived, followed by the lab boys, and I went back down to the precinct. Briggs made his report to the chief, and a cable was sent to the proper authorities in Sicily. For the next few hours, we went through the mugs and picked out all of Gambona's former associates that were still in town. One of them was a girl. Virginia Barrett. Used to be a steady thing with Gambona, wasn't she? Yeah. She's been a good girl, though. Got a job, stayed out of trouble. Well, worth checking. She sings. Not very good, but the joint she sings in doesn't expect anything great. Where is it? It's over on 34th Street. I've been in it a couple of times. What's the name of the place? Something Den. Pirate Den. Yeah. You gonna be busy for a while? Yeah. You want to say hello to Jimmy? Yeah, I thought I might. Well, let me know how you make out. Sure. If I run into Gambona, I'll give him your regards. Yes, sir. Do that. Expense account item five. A dollar and seventy-five cents for still another cab from the precinct to East 34th Street in the Pirate's Den. It was a small place set down below the level of the sidewalk and filled with enough smoke to keep the walls from falling in. I found a table near the back of the room and gave my order to a swollen-eyed waiter that looked like he'd been mixing salad on his apron. When I told him I'd like to talk to Virginia Barrett, he gave me a long look and then wandered off through the smoke. About five minutes later, Virginia Barrett appeared. You wanted to see me? Yeah. Won't you sit down? Ask you to tell me what you wanted to see me about. It's a personal matter. I'll preface it with a drink. No. You a cop? No. I'm thirsty, but I'm even more inquisitive. Heard from Gino Gambona lately? <laughs> Who are you? Johnny Dollar. Should I know you? No. Well, do you have the drink? Right. Now, what's all this about Gino Gambona? Have you seen him lately? You kidding? I'll say it another way. Have you seen him lately? Look, Gino got sent to Sicily a long time ago. I haven't been out of New York since the day I was born. Okay. But have you seen him lately? Look, mister. I just told you. I haven't seen Gino since the day he waved goodbye from Pier 47. I 
don't think I want to talk to you anymore. You read about Barney and Rico getting killed the other day? Dave Rico was killed this evening. That's too bad. Before Dave died, he named Gambona. You knew the Rico boys, didn't you? A long time ago. Now you'll have to excuse me. I go on in a minute. I'll wait. Okay, but don't hold your breath. She walked away looking worried and disappeared through a door on the opposite side of the room. I took a beat, then got up and crossed the room to the door and entered. On the other side, I found a small, dimly lit hall, and a rather large, muscle-bound man walked toward me. You looking for something? Yeah. I think you got the wrong view. I'm looking for Miss Barrett. Look in the other room. I have. Try again. Where'd Virginia Barrett go? She's probably in her dressing room, but that doesn't make any difference to you. Oh, you're wrong. Uh-uh. Now turn around and walk back in that room while you got the strength left. Get out of my way. Just like that, huh? Exactly. Okay. Friend, if anyone offers you a job as a bouncer, forget it. <laughs> I left him lying in a corner and went down the hall, looking on the other side of doors for Virginia Barrett. But Virginia Barrett was somewhere else. I ran out into the alley behind the club just in time to see her climb into a cab on the other side of the street and pull away. Expense account item six, $1.25 for another cab. We followed Virginia to a large apartment house on the west side of town. We parked a half block away. I watched her go in, then I followed. I went up the front steps of the building and looked at the mailboxes. Virginia Barrett's apartment was 203, but the front door had a night latch on it. I picked a name on a box, a Miss Adelaide Jones, and buzzed it. Yes? Uh, Miss Jones? Yes, who is it? A uh, flower. Flowers? From the Ashley Florist. Flowers? The gentleman wanted them delivered immediately. Oh, really? Oh, wait a minute. Well, I was in. I found apartment 203 and started to knock. But sometimes when you get impatient, you get careless. I'd tailed Virginia Barrett, but I'd forgotten about the big boy I'd left sleeping it off in the back hall of the pirate's den. Obviously, he knew where Virginia could be found. And obviously, when he came to, he'd hurry right over. Because when I raised my hand to knock, the big boy barged up the stairs and pointed his gun right at my dinner. Hold it. Oh, why, sure. You're a busy little fella, aren't you? I have to be, or I lose the game. Yeah? It's a treasure hunt. I have to bring back a pound of three-day-old rhubarb, the lapels of three opera capes, and uh, a dozen assorted heads. I'd like to contribute. Well, every little bit helps. I can guarantee some broken bones. Now, about Gino Gambona. You never can tell. Go ahead and knock. Who is it? Marco. Well, good evening. What's he doing here? Go on, get in there. Found him in the hall. Give me some trouble over at the club. He says he's not a cop. Who is it? That guy I was telling you about. Marco's with him. Well. Well, what? That's about all I can come up with. Your name's Dollar? Yeah. You know me? Yeah. Your name is Gino Gambona. <laughs> Did you ever stop to realize that four American coins show us the importance of elections? The first one is the Washington Quarter. It was George Washington who reminded us that on the unity of our government depends our independence, our peace at home and abroad, our safety, prosperity, and our freedom. The second coin is the Jefferson Nickel. It was Thomas Jefferson who said, No government can continue good but under the control of the people. The third coin is a penny, bearing the likeness of Abraham Lincoln, who said, Among free men, there can be no successful appeal from the ballot to the bullet. And finally, the Roosevelt dime reminds us of something Franklin D. Roosevelt once said. Every man and every woman in this nation, regardless of party, who have the right to register and to vote, and the opportunity to register and to vote, have also the sacred obligation to register and to vote. 
These Four Americans, by recognizing the importance of elections, added another page to your political history. And now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Gino Gambona stood in the middle of the room looking at me with a nasty smile, as though he'd just come up with a particularly funny way to kill me. Gino Gambona, one-time lord of the underworld. By all rights, he should have been in Sicily, where the United States government had sent him for the rest of his life. But there he was. And there I was, wishing he wasn't. The big man Virginia Barrett had called Marco, shoved his gun in my spine, and prodded me over to an uncomfortable chair. Gambona held the nasty smile and walked slowly over to me. Who are you? Johnny Dollar. Well, it is. The name don't mean nothing. Who are you? I'm a special investigator for an insurance company. We hold a policy on the late Barney Rico. Mm-hmm. His beneficiary was his brother. I don't know who insured him. Well, it looks like your company don't have to pay off to nobody. Looks that way, doesn't it? Tell me, uh, Johnny Dollar, how much uh, insurance you got? Just a small policy. I'm expendable. <laughs> I'm glad. Dave Rico named you before he died. Oh, really? Oh, well, were you the guy pounding on the front door of his shop? What did you kill Dave for? I thought you just wanted Barney. Well, Dave's last name was Rico. But now, about you, Dollar. What am I going to do about you? Well, I could make a few suggestions, but I don't think you'd go for them. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Whatever it is, boss, let me, huh? Mm-hmm. You got pushed around a little, eh, Marco? I'll make up for it. Mm-hmm. You know, darling, it ain't uh, like the old days. Marco was one of my boys in the old days. On his toes then. You couldn't have pushed him around then. Did you come all the way back here just to kill Barney Rico? No, oh, no, 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 of course not. I had something to get. And I couldn't trust nobody to get it for me. Not even my... <laughs> my little baby here. Now, you, uh, you met Virginia, Dollar? Hmm, briefly. Now, I, uh, I guess she's a, she's a singer now. You hear her sing? Let's stop playing around, you know. Mr. Gambona. Nobody calls me Gino, unless I like him. The police know you're in the States. Mm-hmm. They sent a cable to Sicily. But they ain't going to find out nothing that way. I got it all fixed. By the time they really go looking for me, I'll be back like uh, I never left. And who's going to say they saw me here? Monte Rico? Dave Rico? You? Gino. Let's get this over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Marco, cool this bum off. Take him for a drive down by the river. Sure. What about the stuff? Well, me and Jeannie will pick it up and meet you. Now, get going. Get up. Well, it was a nice meeting you, Dollar. Charmed, I'm sure. Come on. Move. Marco followed me out of the room and we started down the stairs. Suddenly, on the upper landing, the most beautiful distraction I'd ever seen, shouted... Hey, you! And Marco turned his head for just a second. Oh, oh my goodness! Thanks. He had a gun! Yeah, he sure did. Gosh, I don't know what's going on here. I, I thought for a minute he had some flowers for me. Someone called from downstairs and said he had some flowers for me. Uh, you seen anyone with some flowers? No, honey, but I'm personally going to buy you a whole acre of orchids. I went back to Virginia Barrett's apartment, but Gino and Virginia had left a few steps ahead of me. I looked out of the window and saw a car pull away. Then I picked up the phone and called Lieutenant Briggs. Marco came, too, on the way to the precinct. And after we arrived, Briggs booked him and took him downstairs to the interrogation room. Where were you supposed to meet Gambona? How was it? What was the stuff he was going to pick up? You tell me. Two men have been killed, Marco. Not that I know of. 
You were supposed to meet Gambona. Was I? He said so. I must not have heard him. I'm going to put two men on you every two hours. We won't get tired, but you're going to be miserable. I know the route. Where can we find him? You hear me, Marco? I hear you. Where can we find him? I don't know. Where are you supposed to meet him? I'm not. When did you get into town? I don't know. When did he contact you? He did. You're a liar. If you say so. How did you know where he was staying? As I did. Where were you when Barney Rico was killed? When was he killed? The morning of the 3rd. I was at home. You sure? Yeah. Where were you the morning of the 4th? I don't remember. What's that got to do with it? That's when Barney was killed. He said the 3rd. Did I? It was the 4th. Where were you? At home. You said you didn't know. I was at home. Both mornings? Yeah. I said you were at the club. That was this evening. What about the morning of the third? You said the fourth. I said the third. At home. And the fourth. Yeah, yeah. At first you said you didn't know. Now, wait a minute. Lay off. What do you want to know? Where well, we can pick up Gambona. Get his cigarette. Where were you supposed to meet him? Okay. Not to Gambona. Nuts to the ten grand. I'm bushed. I can't think anymore. What ten grand? Ten grand. Gambona promised me to help him get in and out of the state. Where is he going to get ten grand? He's at a stash somewhere. Where? I don't know. To help him. Even Virginia didn't know. Is she going with him? Yeah. Uh, Gino said he'd come back and get Virginia and the dough. He must have a bundle hidden somewhere. When's Gambona leaving? I don't know. Don't lie to me. You said you were getting paid to get them in and out of the country. That's right, but I haven't made arrangements to get them out yet. You're going to meet them. Where? Grand Central, by the Oyster Bar, 11.30. Now can I relax, get some rest? We got to the Oyster Bar in ten minutes. And Briggs had stakeouts placed around the entire area. At 11.30, Virginia Barrett and Gino Gambona failed to show. We waited for another hour. Sir William James report to the information desk. Sir William James. Where do I get back to Marco? Well, the only reason he'd lie is to give Gambona and the girl enough time to get away. Well, they'll never make it. We've got everything covered. Marco's job is to get them out. If he thinks they've got a chance to make it, he must have already made the arrangement. Yeah, but what kind? Well, we can forget about planes. Take a pretty big ship to go that far. What about some obscure boat? Yeah, yeah, that could be a big payoff to the captain. Look, we can figure Gambona got here within the last week. He couldn't afford to be gone too long from Sicily. He told me he's got it fixed that nobody will miss him, but he couldn't be gone too long. Uh, Taking two weeks both ways by boat. Yeah. He must have planned it to arrive here, get the money and his girl, take care of the Ricos, and get out fast. Let's check the boats that arrived from Italy and Sicily in the last two or three days and see if one of them is sailing tonight. Right. We checked the arrivals for the past week and then compared them with current departures. We found one looked like it could be it. An independent steamer, the Atlantic Star, had arrived from Sicily the morning of the 3rd, the day before Barney Rico had met his death, and was due to sail from Pier 16 at 1 o'clock in the morning, bound for the Mediterranean. We piled into a squad car and arrived at Pier 16 at 12.50, where we identified ourselves to the gangway watch and were directed to the captain on the bridge of the Atlantic Star. Hey, hey, what are you two guys Yeah, what do you want? Police, you're under arrest. For what? Where are Gino Gambona and Virginia Barrett? Who? Your 
boat's surrounded. You might as well tell us. Yeah, stateroom B. But right now, he's probably in the galley. What's he doing there? Hmm, that's the way he signed on. Cook. Cook's pretty good at it, too. We took the captain down on deck and Briggs waved one of his men aboard. The captain was taken off quietly, and Briggs and I moved on to stateroom B. Marco. Well, you sure could... Oh, let go of me. Take your hands off me. Now, calm down, Jenny. One yell out of you, and I'll fix it so you don't get to sing with the prison band. Virginia Barrett went off just as quietly as the captain, and the boat was cleared except for anyone who still might be in the galley. Briggs waited outside the galley door, and I went in, with my hand on the 38 in my pocket. I spotted Gambona behind a long table, stacked with pots and pans. He looked up as I moved in on him. Hey, what time is this tub supposed to pull out? It's after. Hello, Gino. Why, you... Sometimes I'm so smart to get hysterical. There I was, face to face with Gino Gambona, ready to take him, single-handed, right where I wanted him. And the next minute I was buried under a pile of pots and pans. Gino drew his gun, made a dash for the passageway. And that was as far as he got. Johnny? What? What? Here, give me your hand. What happened? Somebody goofed. Gambona was dead. Virginia Barrett and Marco, full name Marco Dandoy, got five to ten years for their parts in the crime. The captain of the Atlantic Star got two years, and Lieutenant Briggs got a promotion. Yours truly returned to Adelaide Jones with the flowers he'd promised her. And all in all, everyone got just what was coming to them. Expense account item 7, $52.88 hotel bill. Item 8, $24.56, frame fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $112.07. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> 